schema molization and uh, regular molization with Y90 uh, are both uh, widely used therapies uh, for patients with intermediate slash advanced uh, HCC uh, and um, clearly they have uh, uh, different indications uh, and different data to uh, support their use uh, in clinical practice. Um, at our institution, uh, we rely primarily on chemembolizations for patients at intermediate stage, uh, and uh, radiembolization is reserved for patients who progress after chemembolization or for patients who have a limited portal vein invasion, uh, let's say a segmental or branch portal vein invasion or um, uh, for patients with very large tumors, um, let's say more than 7 cm uh, in diameter, then we would uh, offer radioembolization over chemembolization. Chemembolization is uh, the standard of care for uh, the bulk of the patients at the intermediate stage, which clearly are patients with disease uh, isolated to the liver, uh, no vascular invasion and no extrahepatic spread. Patients with extrahepatic disease, um, uh, let me say, there may be exceptional cases where uh, you may have a truly very limited, sometimes even questionable, extrahepatic disease. These are, you know, exceptions that are real in clinical practice. And for some of these patients, we definitely may offer uh, local regional therapy uh, to the bulk of the tumor, which is in the liver, um, under the assumption that that tumor will, will drive uh, the, the evolution of the disease and hopefully will, will, will have an impact on, on survival and on prognosis. A different scenario, which is you know, technically what we usually think to patients with extrahepatic disease, is where the disease is truly a systemic disease. I think this patient deserves uh, uh, a drug uh, with a systemically uh, uh, active drug with, with uh, a systemic effect. Uh, the question though is uh, to which extent combining a local regional therapy that will definitely achieve a better control and hopefully a response uh, in the liver tumor burden will contribute to boost survival. Uh, this is a very important area for research. Uh, and uh, I think we don't have uh, much data at this point of time, uh, but definitely this is something that will deserve further investigation. Since the advent of sorafenib, like 10 years ago, uh, there was excitement in trying to understand whether the limitations of local original therapy, which is you know, typically uh, the fact that despite uh, having achieved uh, sometimes uh, a response or even a complete response in the target tumors, but then the disease will come back with new tumors and eventually move from within the liver to outside of the liver. So there was a lot of excitement on uh, combining uh, local regional therapies with uh, drugs, in particular with sorafenib. Now, the bottom line after several years of research is that the synergy um, is probably less than we thought. Uh, there may be uh, some prolongation in time to progression, but the impact on uh, survival is not really clinically meaningful. Uh, of course, at this point of time, with uh, more drugs becoming available and uh, different concepts, uh, TKIs, immune checkpoint inhibitors, uh, I think uh, uh, it's easy to anticipate uh, a second wave of clinical trials uh, that will uh, uh, investigate these synergies. Personally, I believe that's the way to go uh, and I'm very confident that eventually we will find uh, uh, a, a combination that will be able to offer uh, sustained, uh, uh, minimal invasive uh, control of the visible tumor lesions uh, with uh, a drug, a systemically active drug, that will prevent or delay recurrences, uh, boosting overall survival.